Have you ever heard of the crane stance? What, you think you can rely on that crane crap? Um, well, Terry, yes, we do. We'll hear more from Mr. Silver later on in the video. The crane stance is a powerful, yet simple exercise rooted in ancient martial arts that can deliver some surprising results when practiced daily. Unlike the popular one-legged yoga pose, the tree pose, which primarily focuses on balance and inner calm, the crane stance challenges your body in a more dynamic way by incorporating intense core engagement, lower body strength, and mental focus. This exercise can be particularly beneficial as we age, helping to improve balance and prevent falls. In this video, we'll explore the incredible benefits of incorporating the crane stance into your daily routine. We'll also guide you through the correct way to perform it, as well as some modern variation exercises to enhance its effectiveness, to ensure you reap the maximum benefits, and understand how to avoid injuries from incorrect practice. Stick around as we check back with Mr. Silver later in the video to see if he, uh, changed his stance. Regarding this exercise, the crane stance is a traditional martial arts posture that involves standing on one leg with the other leg lifted in front of the body. Your arms are typically extended, mimicking the wings of a crane, which not only aids in balance, but also engages your upper body muscles. Before we get started, let's briefly cover some of the benefits from practicing the crane stance. Number one is it improves balance. One of the most obvious benefits is it significantly enhances balance and stability by engaging both the muscles in your standing leg and your core, which are crucial for maintaining balance. Practicing this stance improves proprioception, helping your body sense its position in space and reducing the risk of falls, especially as you age. Number two is it strengthens lower body muscles. The crane stance is a powerhouse for strengthening key lower body muscles, including the quadriceps, hamstrings, calves, and glutes, promoting balanced muscle development and joint health. These muscles work in harmony to maintain the position, enhancing muscle endurance and building strength over time. Moreover, it boosts core strength and stability, supporting your spine and improving posture, which can help reduce back pain. Additionally, lifting the knee and leg in the crane stance engages the hip flexors, specifically the iliopsoas muscle group. These muscles are crucial for hip mobility and stability, which are beneficial for activities like walking and running. Compared to exercises like squats or lunges, the crane stance provides a unique challenge by requiring sustained isometric contraction and stability. Number three is it helps boost concentration and focus. Maintaining the crane stance requires intense mental focus, which can improve concentration and cognitive function. Studies have shown a strong connection between balance exercises and cognitive performance, making the crane stance a holistic exercise for both body and mind. Like the horse stance, many martial arts differ on what they consider a proper crane stance. For the sake of this video, we will focus on a method that is primarily focused on extracting the health benefits rather than martial prowess. Depending on your balance proficiency, it's best to wear shoes with flat and level soles, as shoes with elevated heels can disrupt your balance and lead to improper weight distribution in your feet. And as always, it is recommended that you consult with a medical professional before starting this or any other exercise program to ensure it is safe for you. To perform the crane stance, start by standing with your feet together and your arms at your sides. Shift your weight onto one leg, turning the foot of the supporting leg outward at a 45 degree angle. Slowly lift the other leg, bending the knee and bringing it up as high as possible. Utilize a slight posterior tilt of your pelvis with your tailbone slightly tucked under your body to facilitate lifting the leg higher. Your foot should hover over the knee of the supporting leg without touching it, which will cause your knee to angle outward slightly. Flex the foot so your toes are pointing down towards the ground. Ensure your weight is evenly distributed over your standing foot, which should be flat on the ground, and keep your body centered over it. It's important that you maintain a slight bend in your supporting knee to maintain stability and reduce the risk of injury. Engage your core muscles by tightening your abdominal muscles. Breathe steadily, inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth, keeping your breath calm and even. Common mistakes to avoid include leaning too far forward or backward, lifting the hip of the raised leg higher than the other, locking the knee of the supporting leg, and holding your breath. For arm placement, the most basic method is to extend your arms out to the sides at shoulder height to help maintain balance and strengthen your shoulders. 
You can also form a crane's beak by bringing your thumbs and fingertips together and tightly flexing your wrist while raising your hands slightly higher than your shoulders. Here are just a few more examples of some possible hand and arm positions. When practicing the crane stance, aim to hold the position for 30 seconds to one minute on each leg initially. As you build strength and balance, gradually increase the duration, aiming for up to three minutes per session. Consistency and gradual progression are key to reaping the full benefits of this powerful exercise. When performing the crane stance, safety is crucial to avoid falls. If you have poor balance, use a sturdy object like a chair or countertop for support. Position yourself near a wall to prevent falling backward. If your fitness level doesn't allow you to lift your leg and knee to the recommended height, start at a lower level and gradually increase as your strength and balance improve. Prioritize safety and progress at your own pace to avoid injuries. Variation Exercises Once you become comfortable performing the crane stance, you can add additional movements or elements to both increase its difficulty and target other muscles in the lower body. Let's look at a few. From the crane stance position, move the raised leg to the side of your body, while keeping your upper body and hips facing forward as much as possible. Contract your glutes as you rotate the leg to the side, ensuring the knee remains at the same height throughout the movement. Hold the leg out to the side for 3 to 5 seconds before returning to the crane stance position for another 3 to 5 seconds. Repeat this for 10 to 12 repetitions. Alternatively, you can perform this exercise at a faster pace without pausing between movements. A crucial point to remember is to maintain the slight outward angle of the knee, with the foot hovering over the knee area of the supporting leg when returning to the crane stance position. This movement engages the hip abductors, particularly the gluteus medius and minimus, which are responsible for lifting the leg away from the midline and stabilizing the pelvis. While the stance mainly focuses on abduction, maintaining balance also engages the hip adductors to a lesser extent, helping to bring the leg back towards the midline. Additionally, the core muscles, including the obliques and transverse abdominis, play a crucial role in stabilizing the torso and maintaining balance. Moving the leg to the side challenges balance and proprioception more than holding a static position, thereby strengthening the targeted muscles and enhancing overall stability and coordination. Another challenging variation is to try holding the leg in an extended position for three to five seconds before returning to the crane stance and then repeat for 10 to 12 repetitions. When pointing your toe during the kick, it primarily works the quadriceps, hip flexors, and the muscles in your feet and calves. Pulling the toes back and kicking with the heel engages the hamstrings, glutes, and stretches the calf muscles. To target the inner thigh muscles, perform an oblique kick by turning your kicking foot outward at a 45-degree angle, with the toes pulled back towards the shins, while kicking at a downward angle or straight out in front of you depending on your fitness level, and then return to the crane stance. Again, hold the kick for 3 to 5 seconds and perform 10 to 12 repetitions. As your strength progresses, you can also utilize resistance bands a balance ball, ankle weights or dumbbells to increase the difficulty of the exercise even more. So, what do you think about the crane stance now, Mr. Silver? Hey, I like that! I'm gonna use it! <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more of our content. Thanks for watching.